Hello, my name is Draken. Our solar system, it's full of mysteries. It's something that's baffled scientists for a long time, some of the things that exist out there, and it's kept us quite well occupied. Now today I want to discuss one of those particular worlds. Now, you might already know and see, recognise this planet as Saturn. It's one of the most obvious sites in our solar system and most recognisable. It's filled with mysteries, but today I don't want to talk about the planet itself, or the rings which have plenty of mysteries itself, but I want to come just up into orbit, just outside of it, to one of its moons. This is Hypatus. It is a moon that's caused quite a bit of mystery over the years. It's the third largest of all moons behind Titan and Rhea, but its mysteries are quite astounding. First of all, in comparison to the other moons and the rings of Saturn, Hypatus orbits a 15 degree angle to the planet itself. In fact, it's one of the few moons that if you were to stand on its surface, you'd actually be able to see the rings because you wouldn't be viewing them edge on. Now there are some moons and some objects that do have this, but it's still a little bit on the strange side. Also, since its earliest days, Hypatus has been known to have two different colorations. On one side, it's quite dark, and on the other side, it's very bright, very reflective. Another one of the mysteries with Hypatus is its shape. It's got a diameter of 746 kilometers across its equator, but only 712 between its poles. Now, this kind of squashing, as seen on either moons and planets, is actually quite normal. You get it even here on Earth, and it's caused by inertia forcing it bulge towards the equator slightly. However, with Hypatus, what makes that strange is that this would correspond as though it was rotating once every 10 hours. But in truth, it only rotates on its axis once every 79 days, which is quite a lot different. But perhaps the most perplexing phenomenon on Hypatus can be found at its equator. Running nearly perfectly in line with the moon's equator exists a ridge that is 1,300 kilometers long, 20 kilometers wide, and 13 kilometers high that was first spotted by the Cassini space probe in 2004 and has been pictured a couple of times since. Nowhere else in our solar system has such a ridge ever been seen on a astronomical body, and it's possibly this thing alone that probably baffles scientists the most about Hypatus. There are multiple theories about why these things have occurred on Hypatus itself, ranging from the frankly quite bizarre, such as some people think it might be an artificial satellite, a bit like the Death Star out Star Wars. But the top two most theories for a natural sort of occurrence of what it is, is either that the moon was in orbit with another moon which got broken down by a gravitational total war, if you like, which generated a ring around the outside of Hypatus or around Saturn, that then the dust and the, the particles from that settled around the equator and fell onto the moon itself, creating this ridge. Now, some scientists have some problems with that. They don't think a ring could line up that neatly. And if it did, then we would see such evidence as well on some of Saturn's other moons as well, which we don't. Another theory, though, is that it was struck by an asteroid. This isn't completely unfeasible. There are evidence of a lot of impact craters on Hypatus itself. Now, this theory goes that when it was struck by the asteroid, that it slowed down Hypatus' spin. So it dramatically slowed it from about spinning once every six hours to once every 79 days. The result of the sudden dramatic decrease in speed on the actual spin of Hypatus caused the material to shove outwards, which would have also caused a bit of compressed state. And there's been some computer simulations to run that. But again, a number of scientists also doubt this as well. They don't think an impact could actually slow down a body of the size of Hypatus by that much from a singular impact. I, on the other hand, have got another theory, and it goes back to the idea, again, that maybe Hypatus was struck by an asteroid, a comet, or maybe even another moon in orbit, a Saturn. But, whereas I start with the same sort of premise as the other theory, the effects that I feel have happened to Hypatus might be actually quite a bit different to what the previous theories have suggested. Firstly, I don't think the impact actually struck dead centre onto Hypatus, but instead hit just one of its hemispheres during a time when it was in its younger, earlier molten state. And also, if you were to look at it from the top downwards, it also struck it at an angle rather than also, again, dead straight onto that hemisphere. Now, this could be quite consistent with what we see asteroid impacts like anyway across the universe, but I think this one was particularly significant. The result of this impact angle would actually cause one of the hemispheres, while the moon is still in its molten state, to actually rotate at a slightly different speed to the other half of the hemisphere, as though almost though the moon has been broken in two because of the amount of force that's gone into one hemisphere alone. 
Now, that last animation was greatly done for effect, and it's actually quite extreme compared to what I'm actually proposing. The moon wouldn't have actually literally broken in two. Neither would it have actually been rotating so differently at different speeds between the two hemispheres. In fact, probably it would have gained probably maybe a couple of metres, maybe a couple of kilometres difference between the two hemispheres. And eventually gravity is going to act on those two parts and actually synchronise the two spins and bring them back together again so they're rotating at the same speed and the moon's rotating as one. But once that's happened and once all that's occurred, it has a great effect on its actual equator. Where the two hemispheres meet at the equator, it's going to have quite a dramatic effect with these two slightly different spins. So anything that's all rocky material that's down there is going to get broken up and grounded down, and likewise with any ice it's going to be turned into more slushy material. In essence, what's happening is the equator is getting weakened and turned into a slightly more molten state. However, with a weakened middle half, when the two halves start to get drawn back together again by their shared centre of gravity, these will pull the two halves together, giving it that slightly squashed look. But in addition, as it does so, this weaker material in the middle gets squeezed to the edge, basically forming this ridge that we now see on Iapetus and giving it its unique shape. A way that you can think about this effect is a bit like if you had a scone. You take one half of the scone, fill it with cream, you take the other half of the scone and put it on top, and you squash the two together, you'll watch the cream squeeze out to the edges and create a ridge around the edge between the two halves of the scone. The same sort of thing, I believe, is what's actually happened on Iapetus. This could also explain Iapetus' orbital inclination, because if it was struck at such a location by an asteroid of significant power, then it could have knocked it out of orbit into this 15 degree orbit that we now see around Saturn. In addition, it can also be used to explain the dark and light sides of Iapetus. For a while there's been a theory going around called sublimination about how one side of the moon could become darker and grow to be darker, but it requires a catalyst for something to actually happen in the past to deposit a large amount of dark material to begin with, and that starts the process. Such a strike, if it was a rocky-style asteroid, could have actually been responsible for actually putting this darker material onto Iapetus in the first place. In fact, as you look at the pictures of Iapetus, it could be possible that this crater here is actually the result from an impact that caused all this to begin with in the first place. It's in exactly the right location, and as you spin around Iapetus, you can see a trail of destruction that follows, which matches up with the dark side of Iapetus. And that, in a nutshell, is my theory about the formation of Iapetus. Thank you for watching. My name is Draken. Take care.